Hello everyone, welcome back to Honestly Tea, where you're honestly just getting me. So, I feel like I have to start off this video with an apology. Uh, the last video, if you have not seen it, check it out, was uh, a speed paint of my Eris and Krat, and in the middle of the video, um, my video decided to just blast the music loud so you can't hear me, which was very rude and disrespectful for it, but honestly that was my fault. So again, I apologize for that, but this is a new video in a new time, and I'm pretty sure the volume won't do that again. Uh, if it does, then I will be really upset. Anyway, um, here we have me doing a speed modeling clay version of Squirtle. And I feel like I have to preface this with, I am not the best at modeling clay. I have only worked with it like two or three times before. And you know, I, I saw this as a challenge. I was like, you know what, let me just do this for myself. Let me try to make a Pokemon character because I thought that they were easy, um, fools on me. But I think it came out in the end okay. And I think that you guys will see why later on. Um, and fun fact, I wanted to get polymer clay at first because I know that you could bake that and sort of paint over it and do resin and stuff as I see like online but um, stupid T thought that modeling clay was the same thing so we're working with modeling clay not polymer clay maybe in the future I get to work with polymer clay but for right now that's what we're doing um, and yeah I had like a reference picture right next to me while I was doing this and I just went to town with the best that I can um, and it's really crazy too because out of the Gen 1 starter Pokemon, Squirtle will not be my first choice. Uh, Bulbasaur would definitely be my first choice, then Squirtle, then Charmander. Cause like, I, I don't really like the, the starter fire Pokemon aside from Litten. Litten was really cute. I like what they did there. But other than that, I'm usually, I usually go for either the grass type or the water type. But in this case, I would have definitely gone for Bulbasaur because he's so cute. Um, but I figured that Bulbasaur would be much harder to do than Squirtle. So that's where the decision came in from. Um, in the future, I wouldn't mind trying to work with modeling clay more. Um, and try to do other Pokemon characters that I like instead of just the ones that are easy. Like I would like to do Bulbasaur next or... Um, maybe even some other gen Pokemon since I'm sort of well, not the best well versed like okay I'm not the Pokemon decks okay I'm not the Pokedex I'm not gonna walk up to you and be like have you heard of this really obscure Pokemon that has never occurred in any of the games aside from that one time like I'm not gonna do that but I do know a good amount of Pokemon so it would be nice to sort of branch out and see where it gets me from there um, honestly I should have just started off with Snom because <laughs> it's easier to do I feel and Snob is so cute like Snob is one of my favorite Pokemon from this from the Sword and Shield like I think that they did really good with that design honestly I I like Sword and Shield because of the new Pokemon that it introduces like not all of them all, some of them are very hit and miss but like they do introduce really cute Pokemon and I get the expansiveness I didn't appreciate that I have to like wait so late in the game for the Pokemon to follow me because I thought that that was cute. I like that there was little like you know camping as aspects and you know cooking and things and I was like oh that's cute um but overall gameplay I don't know like I don't know if it's just me but I feel like the games themselves are okay like you're sticking to the formula but each time it's sort of getting more and more easy which for me, I'm not like the proest of pro gamers, but even like the amount of Pokeballs that they give you, like the the challenges, I do like that they shaked up the gym for uh, when you do the gym battles, like you have a puzzle before that. I thought that was cute, but it's like, I, I don't know how I feel about like each new upcoming Pokemon game because it just feels like the same just slap on a couple of different characters slap on a different region and we're here and we're thriving um I actually like the DLC much better because it gave more personality to the story I feel I mean hop hop also added personality too but 
I don't know. Like, the overall is just like, eh, it's a Pokemon game. Like, I love the spinoffs more. My very first Pokemon game that I got was Mystery Dungeons, and I loved that to bits. Like, I would keep playing as the same Pokemon. I would keep changing to different ones. Um, it was just overall so much fun. I remember, like, trying to d dungeon call everything and go through all the levels and save all the Pokemon and add them to my team. Um, it was like the most fun that I had back in the day with Pokemon. And like, I know that they did, um, a remaster of Mystery Dungeons. I don't know if it's just because I've grown out of it, but I personally didn't like it. I also didn't like that they took away the camp where you get to interact with the other Pokemon and play with them. That was like the best part of it, I feel. It just added more like personality to them and stuff like, ah, here's your Pokemon stats. Have a ball. Um... But yeah, I don't know. Like, I know Pokemon Snap is supposed to come out in the future, and that's just like, oh, cute. Um, I personally would love it, and I know that Nintendo's not listening, but if you ever do in the future, like, I would personally love it if they do a Pokemon game, right? Like, they do the two Pokemon thing. I don't even know what the name would be, um, but they do Pokemon game, and for the end goal because every pokemon game has sort of like an end goal where you sort of go back find the legendaries and things like that but after you finish the game it would be really cute if you could just become a gym leader and you could decorate your own gym and add your own puzzles and stuff to it and then compete with other people's gyms and see if you could beat them like that i thought that that would be really cute because you went through all of this trouble like if we're going storyboard wise right you went through all of this trouble going through all the gym leaders fighting the legendary pokemon beating red like all of this extra stuff and what do you get at the end of the day nothing like yeah you get cute outfits and like some more cute pokemon and you could battle like other people but having a gym sounds really cool if you're into battling like that and it gives you that more uh, flexibility and creativity in what you want your gym to be like what type of gym do you want it to be do you want it to be dark do you want it to be fighting like that would be really cool um and then if people don't want that like if you don't want to do uh be a gym leader then it would be cute to bring back pageants you cowards i loved i forget which game it was in like which pokemon version it was but they had pageant options where you could like dress up your pokemon and compete in pageants and get points and things like that i love that because me personally if i was in the pokemon realm i don't think that i would be like a person that will battle them i feel like i would definitely be like doing pokey daycare or like pretty fying up my pokemon and making them cute for pageants and things and definitely taking care of them that's sort of my play style um, so it would be cute if you give players an option like that for end game to be like, hey, you could be like a gym leader or you could be, you could go into pageants or, um, sort of be a pageant leader or a caretaker, like something extra because I already spent X amount of hours doing this one thing, which is battling people from left and right. And then you're telling me after the game, I'm doing the same thing. Like, I don't know it's just like I feel like it's just to extend runtime at the end of the day but what do I know I'm just a scarecrow that's my idea that I've been sitting on for a while that I would really love to see are they going to do it I don't know but if they do you guys heard it here folks um but that's my little cute rant about Pokemon um if I were to choose a gen I'm not good with knowing which gen is what but I did love, like, the anime version. I loved it when Misty and Brock were there. Of course, that's what I grew up with. Um, it was just, it was so much fun watching the Pokemon and, like, trying to guess, like, who's that Pokemon? Uh, and I loved Baneri. Um, she was my favorite Pokemon back then. And I loved uh, Ambipom, Apom, the, the monkey with, like, the hands for tails, like that guy. Uh, I loved him too because he was just so cute and everybody loves Pikachu obviously but I was the hugest like Baneri, Togepi, like I just loved all of Misty's Pokemon if I'm being completely honest. She did have the best Pokemon, my opinion. Um, but after, after Misty and Brock left and they sort of went through the new series of Pokemon, I sort of just fell off because I just, 
I don't know. Like, it just wasn't for me anymore. I get that these games are for new generations and aren't tailored to me personally. But, um, yeah, I sort of just, it it sort of just was like, ah, okay. I guess that's it for me then. Um, I, I think that, like, I'm definitely more, when it comes to games, I tend to go more to, like, real-time playing, like, you could attack at real time and they attack you back real time. I don't like turn-based as much, but I do like Pokemon because it does make it more um, strategy-based and skill-based. But again, as like the games go on, it's basically like as long as you level up your Pokemon, it really doesn't matter what type you have when it goes to story-wise. Like competing against real people, like that matters. But in the game, it's sort of like, if I just keep catching all these Pokemon that I see and leveling up before I hit this gym, I could go in with a grass type to fight a fire gym, you know? Not not mad at it, but I don't know. I need more strategy to keep me interested in a turn base, especially since like if I do my attack, then I have to wait for them to do their attack and then you have to like figure it out from there. Um but I, I think that Pokemon does a good job with that at the very least and making it interesting. I think that's why I gravitated more to the spinoffs like the Mystery Dungeon. Um, I didn't play Pokemon Snap, but I always wanted to because, I mean, it's taking pictures of cute Pokemon. Who wouldn't like that? Um, because it was more real-time based where you sort of just like attack and attack really fast. Um, I like Fire Emblem. I don't know why I'm saying like like that. I love Fire Emblem. Which is really shocking to me because I just said how much I really don't like turn-based games. And, like, that's all Fire Emblem is at the end of the day. But the way that the story is so engaging and, like, keeps me interested. Throughout my first playthrough, I did uh, Golden Deer because Claude. I mean, (laughs) obviously. Um, But... I did not skip through a single text of dialogue, like, at all. I was locked in. I was just like, what's happening? Who died? Uh, who, who, <laughs> who's this murderer? Like, you know what I mean? It was so good. And they gave, I, I was going to say they gave each character their own personality, but you could tell where some characters were sort of, like, due before the deadline, um, you know what I mean? Like, I loved Claude, of course, because beautiful. And I loved Hilda. She carried my team. I love hated her because every time I would talk with her, her dialogue consisted of, like, I'm lazy and I don't want to do anything. And I'm just like, you are literally hard carrying my team. The amount of battles that you won, Hilda. And then I remember I screen capped this and like showed it to my friends. I was so upset. She had the audacity to be like, I don't wield axes. And she's the main axe wielder of my group. I was just thinking, you know what, Hilda? You do you. I get that feeling. Um, I really did like the personalities of Golden Deer. I think that they did take a lot of time and effort into them. I was inviting Lit Lawrence. I don't know if it was just his haircut. Uh, but he was not for me but anyway I say that to say like it was just so engaging and like the strategy turn base was like I would go to the same area but it would be like a different thing would happen each time and I felt like my choices really didn't matter I played in the mode where if your character dies then they die in the story too so I feel like that also kept me engaged to make sure that I just don't th- throw away characters um and here's my thing right like I didn't know at the ending um spoiler alert I don't think I'm spoiling anything but I didn't know at the ending that you could not kill some of the other people like at the very end when you're battling and stuff so I thought that I was supposed to so I killed everybody that was a part of the main story instead of just the soldiers And I sort of got lectured by my friends about that. And I felt really bad because I was just like, oh, did I undertale this? Like, was I not supposed to kill Toriel? I thought I was supposed to kill Toriel. Um, But yeah, I wish my only smallest complaint is that I wish that 
in the end when it tells you like what happens based off of the relationships that you get with everybody you sort of see like a short clip of it or like you know like a cute cutscene with them together and things like that I know that that would be extra animation extra gameplay going on like I get that so that's why sort of like a small thing but that would have been a cute extra anyway I love how I wasn't talking about Pokemon for this entire time, even though I'm clay modeling the Pokemon, and I feel like I should have been talking more about what was happening. I was trying my best. That's what's happening in this video, especially with the eyes. I know that it looks very alarming, and like after the fact, like after I finished recording and stuff, I was just like, maybe I should have just like, you know how like modeling people, like people that do clay modeling and stuff, they like, uh, they hollow out the eye holes a little bit so that they could put the eyes in so that it doesn't look like all up in your face. Um, I wish I did that instead, but I didn't. And next time I will keep that in my mind. Um, but yeah, this was my attempt. I feel like it looks so much better without the eyes, but it also looks really creepy without the eyes. And then I was like, what if I just had his eyes closed? And I was like, I don't know how to make that look good. Um, so this is the result. Uh